there are many ways of describing it. So one way to simply say is that it has to do with paying attention and, and on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally, but that's a kind of technical, operational definition. I'd say really, if you're asking me what mindfulness is, uh, and I was being, and not being poetic, it's an act of love. His visit was about coming here to Japan and specifically to Camp Zama to talk to our military community and many different segments of that military community about mindfulness and how it might apply to their lives. He did so many different things. He had meetings with senior leaders to include uh, Colonel Carriera and General Boozer. Uh, he also met with uh, a number of constituents from the community including our mindfulness classes for soldiers and our mindfulness class for uh, people from across the community. He met with school children and teachers at Zama Middle School and Zama High School. He also met with healthcare providers, both here at Camp Zama and at Yokosuka Naval Hospital. And then he finished up uh, speaking to leaders here in the Camp Zama community as part of a leadership development. You, as you can imagine, it would be variable. I'm sure some people, at least the feedback was, a lot of people really liked it. Some people probably thought it was hokey or, you know, not what they're used to, and other people might have not liked it at all. But by and large, I think, and, and, and part of what uh, Colonel Brummage invited me here to do was to begin to figure out ways that uh, in the regular day of people in the Army, a little bit, little doses, of this kind of, if you will, training of the mind, which will build a kind of resiliency and capacity to be stable and both buoyant and flexible, could be actually incorporated across the day in many different kinds of situations or activities. Right now in, at Camp Zama and across the Army, we talk a lot about resiliency and mindfulness in a is a type of way to build resiliency. It's not the only way, of course, but it is a very important way, I think, and it's affected my life, and I think for the students who took previous mindfulness courses here on Camp Zama, it seems to have positively affected their lives. So I was hoping that his purpose in coming here would be to help augment what was already gained from those first two classes that we did here on Camp Zama and to help spread the word across the community. I think resiliency is really one human quality, one capability that the uh, U.S. Army is focusing on right now. Uh, I don't think that we know a lot about what it is exactly. I think we have some feeling for what it is, but I don't think we know exactly what it is. And I think it's because it's not just one thing. I think there are many, it's like uh, a good meal. It's not composed of one ingredient. It's composed of many ingredients and it's composed also of attitudes and of uh, an approach to how you would actually prepare and cook the food and how you would present the food. And so I think resiliency and resiliency training is a lot like that. It's composed of many components that, uh, that probably need to be identified more closely. And then we need to really ask the question, how would we actually train people how would we allow people to actually practice those skills that would over time and collectively in some way build this something we call resilience, which is way more than just the ability to, in quotes, bounce back. It was my first time with the mindfulness and uh, it's actually quite refreshing and it uh, helped me kind of refocus and uh, reestablish what my priorities are a little bit and uh, calm me down. It brought a sense of calm uh, to me personally after, after you know, a strenuous PT session. You're usually pumped up and you're ready to go. You're charged up, but but cooling down in that manner kind of put me in my in my own little zone uh, uh, to where I, my mind was clear uh, and, and and without even knowing it, my body was cooling down totally. And I didn't realize it until it was all done. Uh, just how slowly and calmly I was able to cool down. I think we all can gain from the experiences that we 
we learned from Dr. Santorelli to try to incorporate mindfulness in our lives, to, to try to be a little bit more resilient, to reduce our stress, and just to improve our overall health and well-being. I hope that some people who've never heard about mindfulness before will have a better understanding of what that is and how that can apply to their daily lives. And in that aspect, I hope that it was, um, it was a success. Well, I don't have a goal of furthering mindfulness on one level. It's more like I'm listening to what's happening in the world. So we're very conscious about beginning to create and extend networks, but it's not because I have some grand plan to bring mindfulness to the masses, but it's more that the world is in many ways knocking on our door. And we're trying in a measured way to ask ourselves, how could we best serve that unfolding process?